In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how I use two lights to create a mysterious fashion editorial image in a palace in Milan. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. This past year I had the opportunity to teach a fashion workshop at an incredible palace in Milan. I teamed up with photographer Chris Knight and we shot two days in incredible locations with beautiful styling and hair and makeup in one of the fashion capitals of the world. And when we teach together, one of our goals is to show how two different styles can drastically affect the resulting images. So even if we're shooting a similar location or similar models or similar styling, our own personal photographic style allows us to create two drastically different results. And so in one of the days when we were shooting in the palace, I wanted to make sure that my images had a little bit of Lindsay flair, which means I wanted it to be dramatic lighting, slices of light, maybe using red in the frame. And that's how I came up with the image that you see here. So now what I'd like to do is take you behind the scenes of the lighting. And then we're going to take a look at what was captured in camera versus what was done in capture one versus post processing. And that's what photo deconstructions are all about. So let's look at the lighting. Here's the room in the palace where I had this subject. Now how we structure our day is we had uh, one model in each different room of the palace. And then we'd have a small group of photographers, three or four with a dedicated assistant. And then we would have the lighting generally set up, but it could be moved around the space in order to create different results for each photographer. And so for this scene, we had three different strobes to work with. And this is the general setup. So the first light that you can see in the far back left is just a bare head with a red gel. So there's no modifier on it. It was a Pro Photo D2 with a red gel on it. And the reason I placed it out the door is that the photographers could take off the gel, if they just wanted glowing light coming in through the doorway, they could add the gel if they wanted something a little bit more mysterious, and they could close or open the doors if they wanted to create narrow or wider beams of light. So that light created mood, ambiance, a little bit of mystery. The next light that I had in the scene is over here to the top right was a five degree grid. Now five degree grid creates a tight, hard quality of light that you can use to create illumination just on the face or perhaps on the background. And so if the subject just needed a little bit of light on their face, this would be a great modifier to do so. And then we added one other light. We added a beauty dish with a grid. And this isn't going to give us dramatic or concentrated result, but it'll be more flattering, lighting more of the subject from head to midsection. And so these three strobes could be moved around the room, moved around the space with the subject. They could use one or two or all three and change the position. And so what I ended up doing is I looked at the scene. Can you see over here on the left hand side, there's a little bit of a slice of light hitting the doorway from the red coming in through the doors. And I saw that and I said, actually, that would be wonderful to have the subject go stand over on that slice of red light. And so that's the vignette I decided to work with. And because of that, I didn't want broad, soft illumination on the face. So what I actually did is I turned off the beauty dish and decided not to use it. But instead, we moved the five degree grid over to follow the subject and brought it in close so it's just lighting her face. So let me show you what was captured in camera. Now in camera, I think the shot is okay, but I was shooting tethered and I was playing around with contrast and playing around with what I wanted to achieve in post. So as you can see, the light is coming in through the doorway. It creates that mysterious, creepy beam on the floor. And I chose red not only because it's my favorite color, but also to pick up on the accents on the dress. The light coming in through the doorway was also reflecting off of all of the gilded details in this space, which I think helps to unite the color palette. So, so far so good, but I then added a five degree grid. That's the one that you saw before and it's coming in from the left hand side and it just lightens up her face because without it, it was very dark in that room and basically her face appeared completely in shadow. So this was the starting point where we began, but then I started to process it in capture one. There's a few things you can see going on here. First of all, what I did is I straightened out the lines. I was probably a little bit crooked. Now, one of the reasons I was crooked, if we go back over here, is the gear I was using. I was shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon 15 to 35 RF lens, which is a really wide aperture lens. And I actually shot close and wide and I had a little bit of keystoning. Plus, I wasn't paying attention and I had tilted a little bit to the side. So I needed to fix the keystoning and fix the angle uh, of the horizontal lines as well. So uh, I came over here and you can see in post a few other things that I did. So here was the original. Here's what I did in capture one. As I went in and I added a circular gradient, a circular radius around her face to lighten it up. 
I also desaturated some of the reds and popped a lot of the clarity. So you can see I get more detail around. And then I added a little bit of red to the shadows. So you can see now that the walls will begin to appear a little bit more red. So in capture one, the main goals were lighten her face, unite the color palette of the shot, and also add a vignette around the edges just a little bit, which is what you see here. So then what I wanted to do in Photoshop was clean up distractions. So for example, I see the exit sign and then there's some weird blocks on either side of the doorway probably to support the frame. Uh, I also can see a little bit of the detail in the hallway, which is not what I want. I can actually see the leg of the, the uh, light stand. So the Photoshop part of the equation was just cleaning up the frame. I also selectively added more red in certain areas, again, to reunite the color palette. You can see I actually just painted red with like just a red brush, low opacity, down the middle of the door frame just to clean it up and make that red appear as if it's glowing through the door even more. So to bring it all together, here is the what was captured in camera. This is what was done in Capture One, lightening the face, uniting the color palette, adding uh, clarity for detail, and then in Photoshop, adding more red and cleaning up any distractions in the frame. So although we had the general idea in camera, a lot of the color palette and finesse came together in both raw processing and post-processing. Now let me add just a couple more thoughts to this setup. As you can see, it was only two lights, and I chose the subject's position because of the little highlight of red on the doorway. But because the light and the mood was creepy, I didn't want something where she was just kind of mugging or posing for the camera in a high fashion way. Instead, I wanted the body language to read something a little creepier, or perhaps a little bit more in duress, which is why I had her lean on the doorway, close her eyes and head up, more like she was being pensive or, or considering her next move. So it began to tell a little bit more of a story. If you've enjoyed this editorial image and you'd like to join me on one of my workshops, be sure to check out learnwithlindsay.com. And by the way, I have so many more of these photo deconstructions already up on my YouTube channel, so be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.